Hello, Thomas Brinsko here, president and publisher of BIC Magazine and BICMagazine.com. Alex Epstein is kind of a hero of mine. He's a terrific energy reporter and an energy realist. <clears throat> His first book, The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels, was published back in 2014 and argues that fossil fuels are a necessary, even critical element in improving people's lives and extending their life expectancy. Alex Epstein testified to Congress a few weeks ago, so I was interested in watching that. He talked about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. He made a case that Joe Biden endangered our nation's security by depleting the SPR. Of course, if you've been watching me for a while, I've spoken about the depletion of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in the past, <clears throat> and I wholeheartedly agree with him. Interesting that no one in Congress even attempted to challenge his case but Democratic leaders insisted instead on trying and failing to portray him as some kind of white supremacist. Crazy stuff. Uh, I strongly encourage you to watch the uh, video of the entire testimony and judge for yourself. Don't take my word for it. You may recall from my earlier blogs that uh, the Biden administration had said that they would replace the released oil and refill the SPR when the price of oil fell into the $67 to $72 per barrel range. Well, the time is here. Now the futures curve for West Texas Intermediate is below the bottom of that range given by the White House to buy crude. Let's see if the Biden administration pulls the trigger and actually purchases crude to refill this strategic national asset. On a related note, Alex Epstein's new book, Fossil Future, does a really nice job examining the hysteria around climate change and especially climate carbon dioxide. <clears throat> he points out that climate alarmists don't really make a cost-benefit analysis regarding the use of hydrocarbons and or more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. They only look at the downside of more fossil fuels and the potential downside of more CO2. Now, there are so many obvious benefits to cheap, reliable, affordable energy that I won't even discuss them, but there's also amazing benefits to carbon dioxide, like plants growing faster and larger, which means more food for the world. There are also plenty of benefits to having a warmer climate, which are completely ignored by the calculations of these dire climate predictions. Did you know that climate-related deaths have decreased, decreased, exponentially even over time? Over the last 100 years, climate-related deaths have fallen 99%. Think about that. Mankind adapts and uses technology, which is driven by energy, to thrive. For instance, drought and resulting famine used to kill millions per year. Now we use cheap, plentiful energy to just pick up the food and water and haul it to areas that need it. Depending on where you live in the world, people used to freeze to death in the winter and die of heat exhaustion in the summers. Now we have air conditioning and central heat. Energy makes mankind better. Mankind always adapts to its surroundings. Still even today, did you know that more people die of the cold than of heat? Is that figured into climate concerns? Is man's ability to adapt ever figured into these concerns? Perhaps you've heard it discussed that climate change and the thought around it has become a religion. Earlier this month, Rasmussen did a poll where they surveyed likely U.S. voters on their thoughts around climate change. 60%, a full 60% of U.S. voters believe that climate has become a religion that's about power and control. What's more interesting about this poll is that even 45% of Democrats agree with that statement. You might remember, I talked about it earlier, only 1% of all likely U.S. voters prioritize climate, according to a July poll. So, looking at these polls, and I'm connecting the dots and read quite interestingly that Greta Thunberg is getting an honorary degree from the theological faculty at the Finnish University of Oslo. Isn't theology supposed to be a study of God and religion? Uh, not really about climate change. It'd be funny if it wasn't true. Every rational human being, including those of us who happen to work in the petroleum industry, want a clean environment and we want safe working conditions, but we must look at the science and consider both the costs and the benefits of energy policy. 
in order to continue to lift mankind and produce the best life possible for all humanity. Please subscribe to our newsletter at BicMagazine.com. And if you're not already following us on LinkedIn and Twitter, please do so. God bless, and I'll talk to you again soon.